Hi everyone, I'm Toluca from Markers and Minions. This is my Facebook group, welcome. This is episode four of Plan With Me, and I want to go over unit three in detail. The last unit, or the last episode, we did the unit three overview, and so I've added to it, and I've mapped out the three weeks for unit three, so I will go over those with you guys today. I've also done my homework, and I looked at NGSS correlations for every single grade level, so that will be coming up as well. And um, yeah, so really focusing on bringing in that science, especially if you haven't brought in much science yet this year. Um, I've attached two links to the, the description of this video. Um, as we talk about it, I encourage you to like click on those and see what's in there. Um, one link is for the next gen st standards, and then the other link is for STEM scopes. Um, so we'll talk about both of those in a little bit. So, um, a little about myself. I like to introduce myself at the beginning of every episode. Um, I teach third grade in Southern California, and this is my second year teaching it, benchmark. Second year teaching benchmark. Last year I taught it to a 2-3 combo, and this year, straight third, I feel like I'm actually implementing the program closely like to how it's supposed to be intended with a little bit of my own um, flair and my own touch on it but last year was kind of crazy with the combo so um, this year I feel like I can I have a, a better grasp on everything so I created this group so that I could share with you all um, what I've learned throughout my experience using benchmark um, I have some updates to share about my shop my T TPT shop First grade and second grade, I'm still having the spelling and grammar pamphlets being proofread for units four through 10. As soon as those are done being proofread, I could um, upload those for you. Um, I have my Google animal report is up there, so I'll be talking about an animal report this unit. I'm doing writing a little bit differently. So that's what I'm talking about, and it's up there if you're interested in using what I'm doing. I have all my bookmarks for the Spanish classroom, so Adelante users. I've got all the text-dependent questions bookmarks on there now. And lastly, my leveled reader companions. I have third grade up and I have fourth grade up as of today. Um, fifth and second are going to be uploaded in the next couple of days. And then we're going to work our way to sixth and first. And then we're going to go back and add the rest of the units. So those are growing bundles, meaning if you buy it now, um, whenever I add new units to it, all you have to do is click download again, and you'll get all the, the updated file like for free. You don't have to pay anything more. Um, OK, so unit three, what you will need to plan are, is your TRS. Um, I actually brought my TRS today. A lot of the times I use just like the weekly presentations, but um, I brought this today so I can show you what it looks like in here. Um, I always like to look at this so I can preview the stories and see what the common themes are throughout the stories. You will need your overview. Ow, oh, paper cut. Your overview and then the weekly templates. And these are found on my TPT and they're free. So you can download those and use them in your planning. I've made some changes, not on the file. I haven't updated the actual file yet, but I've made some changes just on my own that I can go over with you guys today. And I will um, update the file soon with these new changes. So if someone can post the link to um, this template on my TPT, I would love you forever. Just post it in the comments so people can download it if they don't have it yet. 
All right, so in my last episode, this is what I went over. I cleaned it up a little bit, and I think I made like really small changes. So what I'm going to do today, instead of actually going through this, since I've already done it, is I will hold it up for, um, you know, 30 seconds or so. And then when third grade, when you go back and you actually start to fill these out, you can rewatch this and just pause it and copy it. I will also post pictures. I'm going to create a Unit 3 photo album so we can all, every grade level, post pictures of our um, planning templates so we can share and collaborate and then pictures of our classroom and things, things like that. So here's my unit for unit three for third grade. Oh, there we go. Um, I have spiraling signs to show that these are the lessons that spiral throughout the three weeks. I actually forgot them here in inferencing spirals twice and then reasons and evidence spiral twice. Um, I've also put SG at the top there for key details and main idea because I um, decided with unit two, that should be long enough, you can pause it later. Um, I decided with unit two to take that skill that's repeated all three weeks and push that into small groups. So it really freed up a lot of my whole class instruction. Um, so for unit two, I was using the level readers and doing key events and summarizing with my with my um, small groups. So that's what I'm going to be doing again for unit three. Um, some things to note for unit three are um, the language, the grammar skills are review from, from the year so far. So these skills your kids have seen before, you've seen before at least. Um, and then the writing this week is a little bit different. It's focusing on researching. So for um, many of the grades, it's like researching, um, using note cards, taking notes, and um, evaluating legitimate resources on, you know, print and web and um, copyright and things like that. And so I like to teach all of that, but <clears throat> within an animal report that I extend over the three weeks. So this is the first time this year for the most part, that I've actually really, that I will be like digging deep into a genre of writing um, and, you know, taking it through all the steps from research and planning to like presenting at the end with, a, with some sort of visual representation. So that's the unit. Unit three, week one. And you know what? Let me, let me, stop for a sec and go over the NGSS. So before I like to plan unit three, I like to focus on what are my science standards? Because, thank you, Denise. Oh, that's my fitting it all in presentation. That's kind of helpful too. Um, but not the template. Hold on just a second. Side note. Come on, internet. I'm going to post it. I have a lot of new members that may not know about this tool yet. So, here we go. That's what I'm using. All right, so before planning Unit 3, I like to focus on science because I want the emphasis in my classroom for the next three, four weeks to be all science. So I, I did kinder through six, so listen up for your grade level, and I will also post pictures of this afterwards. Kinder, your essential question for benchmark is why do living things have different needs? Your next gen core ideas are matter organization and energy flow. Uh, I think that's a fancy way of saying, like, this eats this, and then this eats this. Plants, animals can change their environment, natural resources, and then human impacts on Earth. Kinder. First grade, why do living things change? And um, with the focus on life cycles. So all of your, your weekly texts have to do with the life cycles. Your, NG, your next Jess NGSS core ideas are organisms, structures, and parts, 
um, you know, plant parts, body parts, growth and development, um, how your body parts can capture or convey information for growth or survival, trait inheritance, and variation. Second grade, how do living beings get what they need to survive? And your stories are all around habitats and different habitats. Um, your core ideas for science are interdependence, biodiversity, and habitats. So last year I had a 2-3 combo, and I focused on habitats for them, and then that was the big difference. Um, so what I, I really taught third grade science to my combo class, but I, was, I made sure to weave in a lot of, like, habitats and that kind of thing. Um, how do living things adapt to change is for third grade. So our stories are all about adaptations, which is really only one part of NGSS for us. Um, NGSS, we are all about ecosystems, social and group interactions, common ancestry and diversity, adaptations, and biodiversity and change in habitats. Oh, thank you, Jennifer. Sometimes the comments don't show up. Yeah, I can only see Denise's comment and my comment and then Jennifer, now your comment. So, I don't know. Um, that's third grade. Fourth, your big question is how do we respond to nature? Your core ideas are rocks and fossils and earth formations, earth's materials, plate tectonics, living things affecting physical characteristics, and then natural hazards. So you guys, your stories are a lot of, um, you know, human interaction in nature and poetry and observing nature. And um, so your stories are actually really beautiful poems. So for fourth grade, I would totally, like, take the kids outside and, like, read those aloud to them and have them close their eyes and try to visualize it, like feel the wind and all that. It's really focusing on humans and how we interpret nature. And then science is on um, your, if you look at your small readers, your small groups, I know because I just typed them all up. Um, there's a lot on, um, you know, earthquakes and tsunamis and things like that. So that's more of like the fun slash scary stuff. Fifth grade, how do we decide which resources we should develop? You have the unit on corn. So unit one is like the evolution of the corn plant and unit two is basically how, like agriculture and how we've monetized it. So like, at, you know, in, for me, like to spice that up, I would probably have um, like uh, focus on um, having the kids work in teams to create their own you know, agricultural business and how would you market your business and kind of bring that into to make it a little bit more interactive. Um, otherwise, that might go over their heads. Um, it's about your NGSS core ideas are about energy and chemical processes, matter organization, and energy flow, ecosystems, again, like us, and then cycles of matter and energy transfer. <laughs> And then sixth, what roles can we play in the balance of nature? You've got these core ideas. So a lot of the same repeating things. I took these from the middle school NGSS standards. I'm not really sure how to interpret those. There wasn't one that was specific to sixth grade. It's just an MS for middle school. So I don't really know if you're supposed to do all of these or just some of these. And your stories in sixth grade are about people, like famous people who um, have, are notable for their interactions with nature. So, like, I know one of your stories is about John Muir and, um, you know, the John Muir Trail in California. And one of my students, her, one former students, her parents are documentary makers, and they took off and they hiked John Muir for a month, and they filmed the whole thing, and it's beautiful. It's not one of those documentaries that's like, I survived, and look how scary nature is. It was literally just them waking up every morning, like here's this waterfall, and it was gorgeous. And it's called A Mile, Mile and a Half on Netflix. They called it that because people would say, how long is the John Muir Trail? And they would go, oh, you know, a mile, mile and a half. It's really like massive. So that's on Netflix. That would kind of be cool to show them what the John Muir Trail looks like. So that's for sixth grade. Hopefully this inspires you in some way. 
Um, and now back to third grade for the weekly views, the weekly outlines. Here's week one. We've got animal disguises and animal tools for survival. Um, I'll review for language. Now, one of the changes that I have made in my own class is I now I don't separate analyze the writing prompt and find lines to lift. Excuse me. I analyze the writing prompt, which takes like five minutes now. It's really fast. And then I immediately have the kids open up their books and highlight a couple of lines that they like that they feel like would support that prompt. So they're finding the evidence right away. And it's and it's right after we've read the text. So they don't have to really reread anything. They just go and find some examples of evidence. And that takes like 10 minutes altogether. So that's why I've combined those. And that also freed up time for me so that on Tuesdays I can actually model the prompt. And Benchmark gives you two prompts. One's a teacher prompt, one is a student prompt. I just use the student prompt and I model that and I just tell the kids to not copy me. Um, but the reason why they give you two is so that the kids can, um, so they won't copy you and so that they can have their own transfer of ideas from brain to paper. Maybe later in the year I'll use the two prompts. Uh, so that's one big difference now. Another thing is for week one, the stories are short, so I can do the first read and the second read in one day. Week two and week three, our stories are a lot longer, especially in the upper grades, and so I've been doing um, the first read here and then doing the second read the next day and followed by the third read, so just kind of grouping them a little bit differently. Um... I also, you see where it says begin drafting, continue drafting, I don't do that whole class anymore. Now that I've got small groups up and running and we're confident in them and they're seamless, um, the kids draft completely in their small groups. So on Mondays after, you know, all my whole class lessons, I've got one group that goes to the writing center, so I do one center a day, they begin drafting. Now, they miss the model, my model prompt on Tuesday. So for, the, for that one group that goes on Monday that, to the writing center and begins drafting, I let them know after I model the prompt that if they need to make any changes now that they've seen my prompt, they have Friday to catch up. So my class Friday, we don't do centers again. We do a catch-up day. So they're finishing all their work from the centers and maybe like going back and fixing their writing. Um, and then that's also freed up more time since I'm not doing the drafting here. I'm not having them draft whole class. Um, lately, I've been doing collaborative writing, so we take the prompt and I separate the kids into their teams that they go to their centers with, and um, they'll write like one part of the paragraph and then on a sentence strip and then they bring them all up we put them all together and it's more collaborative and I've, I've posted a picture of that before um, so we'll do that like Wednesdays usually and then Thursday um, for that writing instead of that continue drafting we collaboratively revise the piece that we came up with on the sentence strips so we go through and we read it and we actually tear the sentence strips and make changes and revise it um, and that's it. Down here for week one, there's this lesson interpreting the charts, the graphic features. Um, I might push that to Friday if there's time. And then um, I'm bringing in science Monday and Friday. We have a crazy schedule, so I, I only have time for science on Monday and Friday. Um, Monday, I'm doing my animal chart. I talked about it last week, and um, I have, just to introduce the unit, I put a bunch of animals, like animals that I cut out of Nat Geo magazines. And then around it, I have six categories, um, description, diet, habitat, life cycle, adaptations, and interactions. And so I'm just going to go through and talk about what those words mean. And I'm going to bring in some core vocabulary into that into that chart, like for example, carnivores, herbivores, omnivores in, in the diet section, and like interactions, interdependence, things like that. So I'm going to do that Monday. 
for science in the afternoon. And then Friday afternoon, I hate Friday afternoons. If they're not crazy, I will do um, a matchup. So I have pictures of animals, different animals, and then pictures of different habitats or ecosystems. And they have to, they get a set of these pictures, each group, and they're going to match it up and try to justify why they think the crab goes to that ecosystem or whatever. Um, so that's actually taken from a STEM scopes lesson. Um, if you look at that second link, it's the one that says accelerate learning slash scopes. That is for California teachers. Um, and it's for STEM scopes. So you get, I think you get like three free units if your school hasn't purchased STEM scopes. And this, this one I think is one of the ones that you can get. So it's like the, their life science unit for third grade or second grade. You can find all the grades on there. So this, this, that's a neat resource. Um, so that's my week one. Hope I'm not going too fast. I can answer questions afterwards. Okay. Um, here's week two. Now, here's where I'm bringing in my animal report. I'm stretching this unit out, by the way, at least four weeks. So... Week one, we're doing um, an analyze the prompt, and it's a prompt that I came up with, like what adaptation would you like to have, or something like that. Or maybe it's from the book and I just changed the wording, I don't remember. But for week two through four, at least, they're going to be doing a, their researching animal report, um, where they have an animal and they have to focus on those six ca categories that I told you about, um, and research those, their diet, the habitat, adaptations, etc. cetera. Um, and I've got that, that's what I was talking about. I have that in Google Slides as a download on my TPT shop if you wanted to do the animal report with your class. Um, it kind of walks them through it. So we have Google Classroom, so I'm pushing it into that and they're gonna work on that during their small group time. Here are the other lessons that I'm hoping to get to. Keyword hoping, this is Halloween week. Um, I've crossed out text-dependent questions down here because my kids, um, in the beginning, I had to help them answer those. That's these bookmarks that I've got. In the beginning, I had to help them answer these and, you know, explain to them that these, these depend on the text. You have to have your book open. You have to find that evidence and highlight that evidence. Um, now, for the most part, they've got it, and this is what they do during the Read to Self Center. So I'm not taking time on Thursday to go through this, walk them through this at all. It's just a center activity. Um, you might want to keep that time open or maybe on Friday to go over them with the kids because these questions get hard. So you might need to do some review. So one more time. Here's week two. And now week three. How come, uh, there we go. Wait, like that. I don't, that week three seems a little light, so I might have some extra time in week three to catch up with things I didn't get to in week two, or maybe push more science into that block. Um, week four is going to be, is mostly all science and GLAD strategies. Um, for GLAD, I'm having the kids, each, the expert groups, they're going to have, they're going to become an expert on one ecosystem, which reminds me, I've uploaded an ecosystem file. Um, inside the file, you'll find the observation charts for um, the different ecosystems. I think it's under picture file sort and it's a PowerPoint. So you can take those pictures and make collages like I did for the posters. Um, I can't remember if I've showed you guys that picture yet. I'll post it in the comments afterwards. And then um, in, also in there is the important book. If you know the important book, that's a cute like big book. I like to blow that up as a big book and um, that's just something that goes in our classroom library and it's all about ecosystems. And what else is in there? Oh, chants. I love chants. So there's like different poems 
all about organisms and adaptations and things that you can teach the kids. Those chants are really good for um, vocabulary. And then the poetry booklet, I like to take those chants and then the chants I blow up and then they're also in the poetry booklet, just regular like eight and a half by 11. They're copied in there and then the kids can actually annotate the chants or poems, whatever, and draw pictures that go with them. So that's a fun um, like individual task. Um, and I'll post pictures of what this looks like in my classroom as we go into that album that I'm going to create. So let me pause for questions now. Sarah, you whole group read the text on Monday. Yes, I read it aloud to them. For our first read, I always read the text. Lisa, what other tasks do they do in the small groups besides writing? My small groups, I've got, I've got a whole video on this, by the way, if you want to figure out like the logistics of it and how it works in my classroom. But briefly, my small groups are um, word work, where they're working on the spelling and grammar for the week. Um, I have the pamphlets. Many of you have those pamphlets, too. Um, or if your district purchased the spelling and grammar handbook, it's that consumable student workbook. So that's what they're doing there. Um, I made the pamphlets because we didn't purchase that. And last year I had to like, you still have access online. I had to print all of those pages off and staple into booklets, which got annoying. So, but that's there for word work. Um, and then read to self center. They answer, they annotate the weekly text and they answer text dependent questions. And like week one, they're only answering two, like the first two, because that's all we've read. And then week two, they answer the second two. And then week three, wait, I lied, this is week one. These are the two short reads. Week two is the animal, the fur, skin and tails or whatever. And then week, I'm so tired. I don't know if I'm making sense right now. My daughter was up all night with an ear infection. So this is for the whole unit. So it takes them three weeks to complete this, basically, is what I'm trying to say. That's the read to self. And then writing, they are analyzing the reading, writing to the prompt, the, the weekly prompt. And then I have the technology center where they're listening to the benchmark stories online or they're doing like a Google Slides, Google Classroom thing. Sarah, are you having each student do their own animal? Yes, they are becoming an expert on their own animal. And my kids have already chose, chosen their animal, so we don't have any repeats. Um, we've already gone to the library and picked out books, too. Roxana, I give them the pamphlet on Monday. So on Monday, I'm teaching the skill for spelling and grammar really quickly. And then they work on the pamphlet all week long in their center. And then Friday, like if they had trouble, if they had trouble on anything that they were doing in centers, Friday is great for catch up. So I'm Fridays, I like to meet with my low group again, my reading group. So I pull them, I do a little thing with them. And then I might get up and walk around and help kids with their catch up. Anything that was maybe confusing to them throughout the week. I don't have comments, guys. I don't know if you're not asking questions or if my thing is not working. Okay, well, let me scroll up to see all the questions from before. Um, so a little more on small groups. Uh, for the for the first week, week one, um, in the in the, in the small groups, I'm actually going to not pull my homogenous reading groups. I'm going to work with my tech center, and I'm going to get them out to, um, onto the Animal Report Google Slides thing that I made, and we are going to answer, like, the first couple slides together. And that's what I'm doing just for week one, just making sure my kids can get on to Google Classroom, open that slide deck up, and then get started and, like, you know, um, talk about what adaptations are and et cetera. 
Um, week two and week three, I'm bringing in our leveled readers. And here's, I'm done with unit three for third grade. If you have, if you bought my leveled reader companions, go and re-download it. You'll have units three and maybe unit four. I can't remember now. I think it's up to unit three. So I'm doing amazing animal senses for my really low kiddos. The ostrich's long neck, habitats of Africa, and why polar bears like snow. So I'll be doing these with my homogenous reading groups for the last two weeks. And um, I'm going to be focusing on key details and main ideas since that I'm taking that out of whole group time. In fourth grade, the leveled readers are all at grade level or above. Carrie, no, they're not. There's some that are lower. I just typed them. I just typed up a bunch. Um, and the way that the leveled readers work are um, there's quite a range. I think there's just like a total of around eight leveled readers. And um, I've taken four books from each unit, and like a low, medium, low, medium, high, and high, and I've typed those ones up. Um, and what I noticed when I was typing up the different um, units is like later on in the year, your low reader is at the level of what would have been high in like the beginning of the year. So does that make sense? The levels kind of grow with your students. But in fourth grade, you definitely have some lower level readers in there. I can, um, after I, um, after I finish the video, I will post your levels. Do you provide the students with a list of animals to choose from? No. Do you know how we can create a group so we can send the Google Slides up to them as a group and not have to type each individual student's address? I use Google Classroom so it gets sent to each individual student and I don't have to type out the, the address. I just, um, I list it as an assignment and then um, before I publish it or like send it out to them, I click uh, each student makes a copy. So they all have their own. Unit two has levels Q through R. I'll look into that, Carrie. Was the animal research report directly from Benchmark? No, no. Benchmark, the weekly writing for Benchmark is all like, um, you'll have a prompt each week um, and then they have a different focus. So like week one, you'll have a prompt and it'll be like, um, you know, take notes on a note card, research. And then week two will be like, evaluate copyright using this research prompt. So that kind of thing. It's all focusing on like evaluating your research. Yeah, they do grow. A few primaries this year. I have a few first grade readers. Okay, guys, if you're if your leveled readers are too hard, go online and get the readers from the other grade levels. I did that last year too, um, you know, because sometimes they're not low enough. So I had to pull from first grade readers. Like I remember for unit five, I had first grade readers in my classroom and I had to pull like the Jacques Cousteau leveled reader down from first grade. And so if you're close with your team, you can actually go and walk into their classroom, ask to borrow their readers. Otherwise, it's all available online. That's the cool thing about Benchmark is you have access to every single grade level, every single component. Um, so, and if you have really high readers and your leveled readers don't go high enough, look up in the upper grades. And I don't really care if they're gonna see it again like the next year because it's a whole year apart. And then who knows if that teacher is actually gonna use that same reader or what their focus is going to be with that reader. So. I pull from all over the place, all the different grade levels. 
Do you use a step up to writing graphic organizer after they complete the Google Slides or do you move straight to the writing? So after they complete the Google Slides, um, the last page in the Google Slides is the mind map and that's going to help them organize their information. And then I say, um, I have a multi-paragraph graphic organizer that I made years ago and I like to use that instead of my step up one um, because there's more room. And so I say take, you know, you have your introduction and your closing, and I like to write those together, like teach them intro and then the closing. And then that first paragraph, since our focus is adaptations, I want them to take all the information that they learned about the adaptations and have that be the first paragraph. And then the second and third body paragraph, they can pull any other two categories that they want. So diet or habitat or whatever. And then you can differentiate it by like if you're if you have some really high kids, have them do even more than three body paragraphs. Have them write on three or four of the categories. Um, and then your real low kids, they've still done the research, but maybe just one body paragraph all about like adaptations or something, whatever your focus on is on. Do you have a resource that helps to correlate students' Luxile levels with the letter levels? Just Google it. Um, you don't, it's, there's, that chart is available everywhere on Google. Um, so Luxile to guided reading level. So the, the letters A through Z is called guided, guided reading level by Fountas Pinnell. And um, if you just search that correlation on Google, you'll see a bunch of charts and you can just print one out or just Google it whenever you need it. I think I'm caught up with questions. So those links that I've referenced, that first link are is to your um, science standards, next gen science standards. And then that second link is to STEM scopes, where you can probably download free unit for science that goes well with this. We also have mystery science, so I might try to incorporate that this year. Um, for my GLAD teachers, or even if you're not a GLAD teacher and you want to try to bring in more of those interactive charts, um, you can start thinking about your five or six categories that you want to carry out throughout your unit. Um, there was, um, you all know mine already, and then there was a great suggestion for fifth grade in the, on our Facebook wall a couple of days ago. Um, for like your core unit, your natural resources unit. And um, if you are, you know, fourth grade, second, first, or K, and you come up with those five or six categories for a GLAD unit, if you wouldn't mind sharing those, that would be really awesome so that other teachers can try it out. Where's the free science resource again? So that second link that's in the description of this video, it says Accelerate Learning. Click on that, and I believe it's only for California teachers. And the website is called STEM Scopes, and they have some fantastic science units that are all next gen aligned. And uh, we purchased it, so that's our curriculum. So we, can, we have access to all of the, the units, but before we purchased it, we got it this year. Um, last year, I was still able to access it. I was able to get three free units. Those are neat units because they have this whole component called um, claim evidence reasoning. So a lot of the activities that you do afterwards, they have the students have a student response sheet and they come up with a claim for like what they've learned the evidence for why they think that, and then like the, um, what did I say, reasoning, response? I don't know what that last part is, but it's very higher level thinking skills. It's very different than like, open up your science book, let's read. It's, it's way more 
evidence-based and engineering themed. All right, so I don't have any questions. I'll hang on for a couple more minutes. I think I went over everything. Yep, so as soon as we hang up this video, I'll go through and post um, some of the pictures that I've already done for Unit 3. I introduced uh, Unit 3 last week, even though we were still on Unit 2, I had a little bit of extra time. And so I did um, my observation charts and the inquiry chart. That's it. Very small introduction. Oh, and I took all the kids' pencils away. I told you guys in the video last week, they came in and um, didn't have any pencils. <laughs> And most of my kids were freaking out. I can't do the big cheese. I don't have a pencil. And I, of course, I open the big cheese and I like, I already start writing. I pretend that we're super rash. And I'm like, guys, just write this down quick, quick. And they're all freaking out. And then one kid goes, just get a colored pencil. And then you see all the class go and get colored pencils. And I said, you would survive. You would be a survivor. You adapted. And then that's how I introduced the concept of adaptation. Adriana, last Sunday you mentioned a few charts you will be using throughout the unit. Do you have photos of them, like sketches of them? Yes, and I forgot to take a picture. I made uh, my, I did it all in pencil because I always make the charts in pencil and then as I'm teaching it, I, I get the marker and I color code and I write as I'm teaching. So I, I will take a picture of that um, as soon as I'm back in my classroom. And I was in my classroom yesterday and I thought I have to take a picture and I forgot. Roxana, do you grade the work completed in their groups weekly? I'm really bad at grading stuff. So I have a pile of their Unit 2 bookmarks, and I have a pile of their pamphlets, and um, that's just sitting on my desk. But I've also done the pamphlets where, like, we go over them whole class if there's time. Um, their writing, I just kind of check in with them when I have time to see if they're in, if they're writing to the prompt correctly. <laughs> oh, Tina. Yeah, your new standards based report cards. I like your report cards a lot. I was on the committee that redid our report cards. Don't tell anyone in my district. I don't want them to get mad at me. But it's very detailed now, and it's standards-based. You're going to have to really, like, I have to get really good at grading things. <laughs> um, but anyway, we modeled ours after yours, your LUSD report card. I wanted to just copy-paste yours, but the teachers in my district or in that, in that committee didn't want to. Yay, Adriana, that's awesome. She says, thank you so much. I so appreciate all your support. Your tips and strategies are helping this program come to life for me and my students. Thank you. And I mentioned GLAD a lot, and I've seen GLAD in our conversations on, on the wall. Don't feel like you have to go and get GLAD trained in order to teach Benchmark. It's Benchmark really is such a thorough and comprehensive program. You just look through it, decide what you want to do, pick and choose, I like this, I like this, I like this, and then bring your own teaching style into it. And my teaching style is glad, but yours might be something totally different. The, the lessons in the TRS are very scripted, great for sub days. You don't need to do the lessons exactly as they you know, script it out to be, write it out to be. It's just a resource. 
Um, this video, Arlene, yes, after I end this video, it will show up on our group wall for a while until people stop watching and commenting, and then it will stop showing up. And then it's always going to be under the videos tab, and it's going to be archived there with all my other videos. And then I also have a YouTube channel where I upload all these videos so that you can watch them at school. I have a lot of teachers that like to watch these at their grade level meetings or um, in their like staff meetings or PD. So you can look up my YouTube also. Tina, me either. So bad. So bad. Oh, I wanted to share with you guys. I wanted to brag for a minute. Let me get my grades. So the tests get better. As many of you know, I take the test with my kids completely for unit one. I read them the text, I read them the questions, I read them the answers, and I help them solve the answers. So unit two, I, um, I still read the text, I still read the questions, I still read the different answers, I didn't give them the answers, so it's still heavily scaffolded. But my class average for, this is just one report because I had them do it online. Um, the other ones are sitting on my desk, ungraded. So this one is unit two, week two. They did it online. Um, class average, 79%. So I'm happy with that. I have some kids, like my highest one is 90%. I had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11 kids get 90%. So that's really cool. So it gets better. And we're in year two of Benchmark. So it might take a while for you to see those results, but they get easier. Sarah, let us know how they go. You're welcome, Tina. Tina, I haven't seen you in our um, on our wall for a while. Where you been? <laughs> piles to grade. Brianna has piles to grade. You know why? Because she's so busy making awesome things and sharing them in our group files for us. <laughs> All right. 47 minute mark. Okay, Sarah, how long does the unit assessments take your students? For um, Usually I break it up over a week, so like that fourth week. For unit two, I did not extend that unit for four weeks. So I said I need to be done with our unit assessment Friday, this last Friday, because I want to kick off unit three and spend a whole lot of time on unit three. So I gave it to them Friday, and I cut it short. Jeez, excuse me. So I made a, I, when I made copies, I cut uh, a bunch of questions out, which I don't know, maybe you're not supposed to do, but I did, and it, we finished it. So that's sitting on my desk. Um, but otherwise, yeah, it's, it's very long, and I, I give like maybe six to eight questions a day over the course of a week. And that's it. Thanks, Adriana. I know I'm happy with it, the class average. It'll get better from there, too. Tina, I'm going to send you my stuff to grade. <laughs> I've been so busy with trying to type up these leveled readers and proofread things, and now my daughter has her ear infection. I don't know if you guys remember, like a month ago, she was super sick for 10 days, vomiting. She was... She only wanted to nurse. She wouldn't eat anything, and then she would nurse and throw up, and we had to go to urgent care because she was dehydrated. She got an ear infection. She got two different antibiotics, and now her ear infection's back, and they said that she's resistant to the other antibiotics that we used. And, like, we woke up this morning and just dripping, poor baby. So... 
You're welcome, Sarah. Can you shorten the test online? No, not that I know of, Carol. I don't think you can. I've only done it paper pencil. Um, one thing I noticed uh, for third grade, unit two, week two, one of the questions online doesn't match the question in the paper pencil test. So you should always cross check that because they all got it wrong because it didn't match, didn't even really match the story. So it's just a typo. I noticed the kids talking a lot more and using academic language. It makes my heart happy. <laughs> Yay. Barb, I still can't figure out how to see my test results. Did you, you've probably seen my video on assessments. I have a quick video where I recorded my screen and um, I showed how to assign a test online how to manually go in and grade the written responses afterwards, and then how to analyze those results. So like see the reports, see your how each student did, how your class did, how your class compares to other classes, how your class compares to your district. Um, you can see specific question breakdowns, specific standard breakdowns. So they say like a whole bunch of kids got number three wrong. Go and see what standard that was and then know like, oh, I can teach that. Um, it's so detailed. It's really awesome. So I have a video on that that I can put in your comment. I can comment on it with a link afterwards when I hang up. <laughs> Aw, thanks guys. Okay, yeah, check it out, might help. All right, so I'll wait like um, 51 minutes. Why don't I wait till 55 minutes for the rest of the questions to come in and then I will sign out. You're welcome, Denise. I met with someone from this group yesterday. She came to my classroom and I helped her prep for a PD that she's leading on Tuesday. That was fun. They just fixed the link so you don't have to scroll to each student to grade written responses. When did they do that, Carol? I had to go in and, and grade um, their written responses for unit one. I did that yesterday, a month late. Um, yeah, no, not yesterday, Friday. And I still had to like go back, scroll down, find the student, click review Elena you might have already answered did you create your research report so it was more cohesive yes so it's carried out throughout all three weeks they don't have different prompts each week um, it's all on one animal and we're really going to focus on the genre informational writing genre And I'm going to bring in my writing curriculum, step up to writing. So I haven't done too much of that this year yet. Which I'm not too nervous about because like they're still getting exposure to the different types of writing with our weekly writing prompts. But it's nice to have them go through all the steps, revise, edit, publish, and then present. Awesome. Any tests given after last Wednesday works. If given before, you still need to scroll, but it saves so much time. I'm excited. Our entire unit has to do with things like ethanol, corn, GMOs. Does it matter what they research? 
um, look at your science standards and see what you need to hit. So benchmark, your benchmark unit is only going to hit part of your NGSS standards. So let's look at fifth grade. Energy and chemical processes, matter organization and energy flow, ecosystems, cycles of matter and energy transfer. So you could even focus your research report on one of these strands that may not hit, um, be hit on in benchmark. Or like um, if you assign each team, like say you, you have one team and they're corn farmers and another team and they're like depending on where you live here in California like we have a lot of almonds and avocados and rice fields you know have them assign them a, a resource and have them actually like this is what I would do have them actually um, research how to um, apply what is being taught in that second story week two it's all about like the economy and what drives these big industries for these resources and you can debate you know like the controversies behind them um, non-renewable versus renewable things like that they can research what's going on with our oil currently right The point of the research is to be able to learn how to analyze and evaluate for validity and look at arguments and sources and where are they coming from? Is it fake? Is it biased? Especially up in those upper grades. Okay, yeah. I don't know. I if I if That's just kind of like what I would what I think I would do, but I've never taught fifth grade, so I really have no idea what that would actually look like in my fifth grade classroom. <clears throat> All right, guys. I'm out. going to call my husband and tell him to come home with our little one. And once I, um, you know, once we eat dinner and get her off to bed, I'll continue working on the fifth grade readers and the second grade readers so I can get them to you quickly. Hope this helped. Karen, real quickly, do you need a login for STEM scopes? Nope, you shouldn't. You'll only get access to, I think, three units, but you shouldn't need a login. All right. Bye, everyone. Thank you.